Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel, um, and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. So, I'm outside, I'm on a golf course, um, that's pretty much why I'm starting this, honestly. It's super aesthetically pleasing, but, uh, I wasn't sure if I was gonna start another reading vlog today or not, but we're going for it, just because I can get some really nice outdoor shots for once, and I'm taking advantage of that. Um, I don't golf. John does, but I like to sit in the cart and read while he does that, so that's what we're doing. Currently I'm reading Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. I'm about 50% of the way through-ish. I'm really, really liking it. Um, but yeah, I will probably put some really nice, pretty nature things in, because it's a gorgeous day out today, and uh, I'm really, really liking it. So yeah, I will update you guys when I have something to say. Hey guys, welcome to Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Um, it's only been a couple of days, so that's not too bad. It's what my usual is. But um, I actually have some pretty major reading updates for once. You will notice I inserted zero clips of the golf course because, well, Fireborn was really, really good and I did not stop to get my phone or my camera out or whatever and film anything, so... Yeah, I just didn't do it. I just finished the book instead. And, uh, update, it was five stars. It deserves absolutely every single review that people have given it. I freaking loved that book. I can't wait to pick up Flamefall. Yeah, I can't wait to pick up Flamefall. The dragons were awesome. The storyline was awesome. The romance was cute, mostly. Um, I would, I'd have been okay with more of that, but I, I get it. It's fine. Hopefully there's more of that in the second one. But, uh, yeah. I loved it. And then follow up to that, I finished, I've been calling it the wrong thing this entire time for the record. I've been calling it How to Be a Badass Witch. I actually read How to Be a Badass Vigilante and uh, not, not as great of a review for me there. So I thought that I was reading How to Be a Badass Witch, which is like the first three books, I guess, in a different series by the same author or like the first part of the series. I don't know, this is like a continuation series, I guess, How to Be a Vigilante is. Um, and you're following this girl named Kira who found a book in a bookstore that was called How to Be a Badass Witch and it like taught her magic and she used her newfound abilities to like fight crime and be a vigilante. Hence this book. It was not good. That's all I have to say about it. I don't think I'm quite to the point of giving it a one star review because like I finished it and it's really hard for me to give out a true one-star review, but it was not good. I posted a whole review on Goodreads about why I didn't like it. I even, I don't usually even do this, but like, there were lines in that book that bothered me so much that were like blatantly misogynistic or like blatantly fat phobic that irritated me so much that I highlighted them and then like made my highlights public on Goodreads so that people could see what I didn't like. Um, there were just things like, oh, women hated it when men pandered to their feelings, so he wasn't going to be like that. And there was a line where she thought to herself, like, oh, she wasn't going to be one of those women, or what was it? Um, something about, like, women always want to change a man, and she wasn't going to be one of those women that tried to fix what was wrong with a man, or something like that. It was it was awful. And then, like, the male kind of side character but romantic interest of Kira is, like, the good guy TM character where he's, like, constantly trying to be, like, this good boyfriend and perfect guy but, like, in his head he's thinking, like, the shittiest things including, like, constantly judging what she and what other people around him are eating. Like, it was a big focus of so many scenes. Like, Apparently using magic uses a lot of calories and therefore Kira eats a lot to compensate for that and like at one point they go to what is essentially a McDonald's, I don't know, and she orders like four burgers or something and he like he orders one and like she, he knows what's going on with her and he knows like what is happening with the magic and everything and he's like, um, 
oh, like, does this embarrass you? Blah, 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 blah. Like, it was just cringy. It was cringy and it was awkward. And like, it was the food thing was like a big focus and the weight thing was like a big focus. It was just, it was a book that had a female protagonist and female main characters that was blatantly written by a dude who thinks that he knows what women are, but has no clue. And that's what bothered me. I just, oh, I did not like this book. Um, and on top of that, you have these other side characters that are like, in Switzerland, their like, job is to go and get witches, and if they won't join their specific coven, then they like, take their powers away from them. And so they're in Switzerland, and they're tracking down this kid, and like, the one guy with this, this two, group of two people, um, constantly is correcting like, they interact with this this other guy who's from... I don't even think he's from Switzerland. Um, I want to say he was from an African country, but I don't remember which one. But he was, like, living in Switzerland at this time, and he spoke fluent French, and French was his first language. And he, like, would say things, and he would try and use, like, English euphemisms and, like, English slang and, in, in, like, things that he was saying. And this guy, who English is his first language and he didn't bother to learn a lick of French, and he went to France expecting everybody to speak his language, would just constantly correct this guy and, like, condescend to him about the fact that he was getting these sayings wrong. And it's like, he's fluent in a language, in multiple languages, and you cannot say the same, sir, so, oh, oh, everything. Everything about it rubbed me wrong. I did not like it. I will not be continuing it. I cannot recommend it to you guys. That is enough for this rant. I will probably go into all of this again when I do my wrap up, but I did not like it. But things are looking up after that because, so then, let's see, yesterday was Monday. So yesterday I listened to and finished the audiobook for A Dead Gen in Cairo by P. Jelly Clark. And I started reading those at the recommendation of Jashana from her channel because like she made it sound so cool and it's literally like an alternate history Cairo, I want to say like 1910 or 1920, where like magic is real and it's like a steampunk Cairo and like um, the main characters are members of like agents for the Department of Alchemy and like supernatural beings and stuff so like magic is accepted in this community, like, jinn live amongst the regular people and things like that. It was really cool. The whole concept was really cool in, like, a historical setting. I really, really enjoyed the audiobook for that. Um, I think I ended up giving that four stars. It was really short. I mean, I listened to it on two times speed. I think I finished it in, like, 45 minutes. It is, a, it's a short story. Um, and then, uh, this is gonna be a long update because I've done a lot of reading, surprisingly, over the last couple of days. Um, then I finally picked up the Wisteria Society for Lady Scoundrels by, oh, I don't remember her name. I'll put the cover over here, I guess, with her name on it. But um, the Wisteria Society for Lady Scoundrels, which follows Cecilia, who is a lady pirate in uh, 1800s London, I guess, but like alternate London. Apparently that's my thing right now is like alternate fantasy history. Um, is that a thing? I'm making that a thing. Anyway, um, and she's like a lady pirate, and they fly houses around with witchcraft. It's pretty cool. I'm only like 14% of the way through, so I really don't have too much of an opinion on it yet. The, the tone of it, I'm looking up there, not that you guys can see, the tone of it is really similar to The Ruthless Lady's Guide to Wizardry for me, um, but I, it's clicking with me a little bit more, whereas... The Ruthless Lady's Guide to Wizardry was, like, funny, but I didn't 100% love it. This one is clicking with me a little bit better. The humor, um, all of it, the, the main character, everything, I'm enjoying it a little bit more. So, um, yeah, that's that one. And then today, I listened to and finished The Haunting of Tramcar 015, also by P. Jelly Clark, which is the next, like, short story in that series which I actually enjoyed even more than the first one. I think the first one was so short that I was struggling to, like, grasp everything that was happening because that's not a mythology that I'm, like, normally familiar with. The The closest that I've come to reading anything like that is when I read The City of Brass. Um, and so it's it's Egyptian mythology, and it was really, really cool. And The Haunting of Tramcar 015 was, was fantastic. I gave it five stars. Um, I definitely... If you haven't read any of those 
short stories, I highly recommend it. The audiobooks are really, really good, and yeah, I just really enjoyed it, and it's really ramping up my book count for this month, honestly. I'm not, um, not mad about that, because we've been, we've been lagging behind on our Goodreads goal this year, so, um, we're playing a little bit of catch-up. I'm trying to cram in as much reading at the end of this month as I can. Um, yeah. I've been talking for 10 minutes in this clip. So that is it, I think, for this update. It was pretty long, and I'm probably going to have more to say the next time. Um, but yeah, I think I will talk to you guys if I have anything else to say. So uh, talk to you guys later. So my intention really wasn't to vlog anything right now because, uh, like, I'm working from home today and it's in the middle of my work day, but, like, I ordered a new laptop in March and it finally got delivered, so we're just gonna do a little unboxing because I'm just really, really pumped about this. Our laptop, well, we have the one John and I share, so, like, that's been a whole thing and I've been working on it for the, literally the last year and a half when I have to work from home. So I am so excited because that laptop is old and the battery on it is terrible, and this is the first laptop that I think that I've gotten in, God, since college. So, we're really pumped about it. We're gonna unbox it, and I cannot wait to edit videos on this. This could not have come at a more perfect time, because today's Thursday. I didn't say that. Um, but it could not have come at a more perfect time, because I jinxie. Because I haven't actually edited the video that I plan on going up tomorrow, which is my booktube birthday tag, which is why a video will not- this is all irrelevant, you guys will know all of this because this video is going up after all of this has happened, but um, I haven't edited the booktube birthday tag that is supposed to go up tomorrow yet, and uh, I get to test out my software on this new laptop, and I cannot wait! Okay, so we're gonna unbox now. Oh my god, you guys. I'm so excited. I can't even deal. Like, I have literally been waiting for this since March. And there it is. I'm pumped. Alright, that's all I wanted to do. Anyway, back to work. Alright guys, welcome to Monday the 31st. Uh, this vlog went a little, like, a couple days longer than I intended to, um, just because I obviously haven't updated you in a few days, but that's fine. Um, I just didn't feel like closing it out yesterday. We've been having some issues with our washing machine. It's been a pain. Um, but anyway, I do have a bit to update you on. What did I talk about in the last clip? I think it was... Alright, so I talked about the Dead Jin in Cairo and the Haunting of Tramcar 015. Um, 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 what have I done since then? Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels, which was, I'll put a clip of it over here because I don't remember what the author's name is, unfortunately. Um, but it's right here. And I really, really enjoyed it. I think I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. It was super cute. It was a book that just didn't take itself too seriously. It's, I mean, it's absurd. It's ridiculous. And it was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it more than I thought that I would. Um, it was a romance as well. I don't know if I mentioned that. And the love interest is Ned Lightborn, who is also a captain whose house had gotten pushed off a ship, so he's currently homeless. Um, and he's got all sorts of different identities, but he's a pirate and he's many other things as well. And he's just trying to kind of follow Celia around, in all honesty, for reasons of his own. Um, and she is very, very against falling in love at this time in her life. She just wants to get promoted to the top of the society, the Wisteria Society, and just do her own thing and rob people. And it was just, it was a lot of fun. Um, that comes out later on in June. I think it's maybe like this week or next week. Um, so that comes out soon. I really recommend that you guys pick it up. It was a lot of fun. If, I mean, if that's your thing. I know a lot. It, it's probably not for a lot of people. Um, just, like, the humor was probably a bit of a miss for a lot of people. And, like, it is a romance. There was a little bit of smut, kind of, towards the end. 
but I mean if you like historical romance and you like fantasy I would definitely say pick it up. I, I The humor kind of hit a lot like the Ruthless Lady's Guide to Wizardry for me except I think it, I liked this one more. I did really really enjoy it. Um, I'm really not gonna talk too much about everything in this I say after I just talked about that for two three straight minutes but um, did I read anything else? I feel like I did. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Okay, sorry for the brief interlude while I got my shit together. Not that you waited any time at all. Um, I was forgetting something. I read the audiobook of The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart and I freaking loved it. I finished that audiobook in two days. Granted, it's not very long, but I finished that audiobook in two days and The Bone Shard Daughter is, it follows several characters. Uh, you follow like the Empress's daughter and he's refusing to acknowledge her as his heir and he controls everybody using bone shard magic in which people have to um at a certain age I believe like it's their it's a tithe and they have to provide like a piece of bone shard from like their head I think it's like around here and he can use it to make these like animal like constructs that are pretty much running his entire empire but the problem is when your bone shard is used to power one of these constructs, it actually drains your life. Um, so the emperor is the only one who's allowed to learn this, him and his heir, but he won't, he won't name his daughter as his heir, and so she just decides to take it upon herself and learn it anyway. And you also follow a character who, he's a smuggler, um, and he kind of just keeps getting dragged into doing, like, good people stuff, like, then he doesn't want to like he has a goal he's trying to find his wife that's all he wants but he just keeps kind of getting dragged into like rescuing these children so they don't have to go through the tithing ceremony and he just ends up smuggling a bunch of them and he has the most adorable little animal companion everybody that has read this book has said it and i am a sucker for a good animal companion and i really don't know what methy is but i kind of picture something between like a lion and an otter ish. He's precious. He can talk. That's really all you need to know. Um, and I think those are the only two point of views that you really switch between. It got pretty dark. I didn't actually anticipate it getting as dark as it did. Um, I, I kind of just thought that this was like a YA fantasy. And I really, now that I'm talking about it, I don't actually know if it is YA or adult. I will look that up. But it was great. I adored it. I literally, like, I listened to the audiobook while I was working and read it in two days and freaking loved it. And I believe the sequel is coming out very, very shortly here. So can't wait to pick that up. Um, but if you have not read The Bone Shard Daughter, I really recommend it. I ended up giving it a five out of five stars. I adored the characters for the most part. Uh, the audiobook narrator was amazing. So yeah, definitely pick that up if you get the chance. And those are the books that I read since I last updated you. Was it Thursday? Maybe it was Wednesday. I really don't know. Last week is a blur. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. And uh, what else? I got my new laptop. Obviously, I showed you guys that. So that was Thursday. And I am loving it. It's fantastic. Uh, it has really upped my editing game because um, you guys probably won't notice the difference. But back end stuff, uh, it's, it's changed a lot. Everything is going a lot faster because our old laptop was old. Um, so that is exciting, and yeah, I guess I'm just going to end this vlog here. I don't know if I'm starting another one this week or not. Uh, like I said, I'm ending this late. I don't really know what I would talk about. I, I have, oh, I did <laughs> one more book to discuss, and that is The Blade Itself, which I started reading. So I did start The Blade Itself a couple of days ago. It's very slow going just because I was trying to finish up a few other things and I've been distracted. I haven't really been reading very much. So we're getting there. I'm literally only like 40 pages in. I don't have any thoughts yet. I am attempting a new tabbing system with it. I, I don't know if you guys care. I don't know if you do about how I annotate my books. I'm still developing a system. I'll probably put out a video about that sometime in the future. I started out using the tabbing system that like everybody on booktube kind of used, but now I'm leaning a little bit more towards the one that Becca and the books uses because it just, it works better for me um, in terms of like reading comprehension and all of that stuff. So I might just do that. From now on, we're, we're gonna see. We're trying it out with Trader's Blade. Is that the first book? No. 
the blade itself. We're trying it out with the blade itself. Um, so we'll see. Uh, but speaking of that, I also have The Traitor's Blade, which is by Sebastian de Castell. That's the first book in the Grade Code series. And I believe that I'm doing a buddy read on that with Z from You Can't Catch Z and Lauren from Lightning Lavender this month. So I will put their channels down below. We don't really have a plan for it yet. We just decided we're doing it randomly. Uh, so that's gonna be coming up. And yeah, I think that's it, honestly. That's all I wanted to talk about. If I have anything else, I guess I'll end up just starting another vlog and you guys will see that next week. This has been a super rambly update. This vlog is already gonna be pretty long, so I will wrap this up here. Um, if you guys liked this, please give me a like and a subscribe. I would really appreciate it. I will link all of the books that I talked about down below as per usual, and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye! Thank you.